All right, guys. So welcome to another video for the Poco X3 Pro, and this time we are talking about potato. You got it right. If you looked at the title, we are talking about P O S P project. That is Potato Open Source Project. Now this is an Android 12 based ROM. I've been using it since yesterday. I've tested it, and the review is ready to be served. So before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything, and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, well, join us on Telegram. We have more than 1,500 members over there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort. Please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people! Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So, first things first. Let's get on with it. In the Poco X3 Pro updates group, we are going to go to the new channel, and as you can see, this is version 5.1.0. It is an unofficial build, is what we are talking about, but it has been getting regular updates, so that is a good thing. It works on Vue and Beema both. This is Android 12, of course, released on the 18th of January 2021. Now the change log is very very short over here. It says bumped to 5.1.0 January security patch, and you do have something called as a full change log over here, which of course I'm not going to read because it's a lengthy one. You can probably go ahead and pause the video and read through it because it's yeah, that's a lot of changes. I really fail to understand how people with unofficial tags get to put this much effort in these ROMs, and I really really appreciate that. Now the device change log over here says import QTI perf learning module configs power add custom boost extension for scroll handling power add custom mode extension for handling app launch power bump max interactive duration to 5 seconds perf extract perf boosting from vendor tree perf again that's performance tune scroll and app launch v1 config reduce frequency boost and bump cpu bw on scrolling event and this is oss based includes g apps firmware 12.0. whatever based on your region se linux is enforcing safety net it says failed so that will be a concern for you if you still want to use this rom you can root and you can see the guide that we've made on how to get safety net working on a rooted android 12 custom rom so let's first go to the settings menu over here. You do see that it is already following the Monet theming system, which is a good thing. So if you go to About Phone, you go to Android version, you will see you have sort of a logo with a potato on it. It, it it's funny to me, but it's a good thing. I mean, come on. PSP version 5.1.0 plus 3. I don't know what that means. This is a community build January security patch, and it comes with the Shaldia potato kernel. So. This is Shaldia kernel that we are talking about, but probably a little customized for this particular ROM. So let's go to the home screen and talk about the important things over here. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that you have a potato wallpaper. You have a very, very basic layout with Google search at the bottom and assistant shortcuts, uh, navigation bar fill and things like those. All of them are present, Android 12 stuff. Now, apart from this, if you pull from the top to bottom, you will see that you have your regular set of quick access tiles, including the screen recorder, and you don't really have a ton of customization. Now, if you are someone who does switch a lot of custom ROMs and you watch my videos, understand that the amount of customization you will see over here most of the time will also give you a hint how much customization this ROM supports. So that's a good hint there. Over here at the top, you have everything almost empty. Not much is going on. You don't even have uh, battery estimates is what I cannot see over here. So yeah, those things are missing. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which is working absolutely fine, as you can see. Butter Smooth, this is one of the ROMs on which the Google Feed is working absolutely smooth, and that is a good thing. Now, if you press and hold over here, you will have Home Settings, which takes you to Launcher 12. Now, recently I made a video on the K20 Pro in which I showed you that Launcher 12 is highly customizable. So if you actually go to home screen over here, you have a ton of customization. If you go to general, you will have auto adaptive icons and themed icons for some reason is grayed out. Uh, if you can find out and let me know in the comment section why that is grayed out. But yes, Launcher 12 is present and it does give you options for customization. Now moving on, if you talk about the app drawer, you don't really have a lot of bloatware. This is a ROM which comes fairly debloated, which is a good thing. The camera situation over here is extremely basic. You don't really have Gcam or any fancy stuff going on. 
the camera does the job and the app icon animations are just in place. They are smooth, they are stutter free and the UI is doing a fluid and brilliant job. Although understand we are on always 120 hertz mode. Now moving on, let's go to settings over here. You will see that you have your standard Android 12 stuff going on. No major things over here. If you go to apps, you don't have the Android 12 game dashboard. At the same time, if you go and search over here, you have game settings, but you will not be able to find it. So probably the game dashboard is missing and maybe they can add that in a later update. But you do have things like this fries. They are calling their customization menu fries. Of course, when you're going to call a ROM, potato open source project, you might as well call your customization menu fries. So require unlocking to use sensitive tiles, advanced reboot, double tap to lock screen, annoying notifications, themes. This is uh, the option to customize monet, some amount of status bar customization and some amount of customization to the key guard as well. So not much going on there. If you go to display over here, let's scroll all the way to the bottom. You will have the minimum and maximum screen refresh rate. So you don't have the advanced features like DC dimming or high brightness mode and things like those. So those things are missing as well. If you actually go to wallpaper in style, you don't have the option of themed icons over here, but you just have one wallpaper. So, you know, not much going on here. Probably you'll have to download and select the wallpapers of your choice. If you talk about the security features, everything seems to be updated. Fingerprint has been added and it works absolutely fine. You can see that the device over here is encrypted. Moving on, if you go to privacy, you have your standard Android 12 stuff over here. You have notification history in the notification menu. If you go to system, you have gestures over here, which does give you access to a few options, but three finger screenshot is also present, but not visible over here. So extended screenshot, three finger screenshot, these basic functions are available and they are working absolutely fine. So this is a very, very vanilla and basic Android 12 ROM. You don't really have a ton of customization. Probably that also adds to the way the UI is fluid, how smooth it is and how well it is working. You get Google Dialer, Google messaging application. So, you know, all basic stuff going on. Now, as mentioned in the change log, if you talk about safety net, it does say failed, which means your Play Store certification will also show not certified. And as far as Widevine L1 is concerned, DRM info, Widevine L1 is present. So that is a good thing. Now, what is left to check is the battery backup charging and the benchmark numbers. So first, let's get going with benchmark numbers. So let's go to Google Photos over here. You don't even have unlimited uh, storage for Google Photos. So that is missing as well. And if you actually go to screenshots over here, you will see I had two runs, 191, 128, 89% throttling, 193, 494, 88% throttling. So the throttling score is pretty decent. If you then go to Antutu benchmark over here, you will see we got a very good Antutu score of 594, 797. Prior to this, when I did an Antutu run, I got a score of 598 something. So the performance numbers are absolutely great. The battery dropped by 3% and the temperature increased by 8.3 degrees Celsius. Now, at the same time, if you go to settings and you go to the battery section, you will see that you do have thermal profiles over here, but you don't really have the 180 hertz touch sampling rate. So that is missing. And if you talk about the battery usage, you will see we've been on battery for 18 hours. We've been using the screen for almost an hour. We are still at 84%. So the battery backup of this ROM is pretty decent. And as in when you use this ROM for two to three charge cycles, you will have a better experience. And that brings me to the charging speed. So the charging speeds are pretty good. No problem there whatsoever. The last bit that we are left to check over here is the Geekbench numbers. As you can see, 785 single core, 2644 multi-core. So all in all, the latest edition of POSP or Potato Open Source Project is doing a good job as a daily driver. There are a lot of things that are missing and safety net is not passing as well. So, you know, it might not be a complete daily driver, but this ROM is headed in the right direction. Let me know your thought about this particular ROM in the comment section. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.